Munch, 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 munch. Welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast. Not for you. Not no, not your French fries. Episode number two hundred. Whoa! That's it. We I can't done believe we've made it. Two hundred of these. First off, this episode is brought to you by the wonderful Me Undies, the softest underwear and the coolest underwear in the world, delivered right to your door. New designs each month, three times softer than cotton, and you can get subscription plans. You can get one pair, you can get five pairs, you can get 50 pairs. Go to meundies.com slash Jenna Julian, check it out, and get 15% off your first pair. Also, guys, if you need some food or something from the market and you just don't feel like getting up, Postmates has got you covered. Postmates is the app that provides delivery services to establishments that don't have delivery. So you can get restaurant food, you can get takeout food, you can get fast food you can get That's stuff how from i the, got these french fries we literally postmated these french fries so it's cheat day you guys want some french fries yeah postmate your french fries right now postmates is giving you a hundred dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days to start your free deliveries download the app and use code jenna julian also guys we have a new sponsor it is farmer's dog guys this is farmer's dog as you can see it's for kermit and amazing okay it is a meal they make meals for your pets and then is it is like high quality ingredients this is no kibble okay not for you they are I mean, actually that is, but not these <laughs> this is this is actually this is is for, for you, you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, frozen right now though baby farmer's dog is a company that helps dog dogs live longer and healthier with fresh ready to serve meals delivered directly to your door guys uh studies show that even adding fresh food to your dog's diet can reduce cancer risks by 90 percent uh, also, not to mention, your dogs will fucking lose their mind for this food. They will love it. Mm-hmm. Right now, guys, you can start feeding your dog better food by uh, going to the farmer's dog. That's T H E F A R M E R S D O G dot com slash Jenna Julian. And you get fifty percent off your f- two week trial of fresh, healthy food for your pet, your little baby. So check it out, guys, or hit the link in the description. PG wants everything on this table right now. So Baby we girl. we thought for kind of a while about what we wanted to do for 200 episodes, and we kind of just came to the conclusion that we think it'd be cool to just kind of sit here and like talk about it. Celebrate. Good and time. celebrate. Not for you. And you know what's interesting is I feel like, I I feel like this episode, um, well, it's not really a coincidence, but last night we were, we were streaming on Twitch. And, uh, you know, for the most part, we stream on Twitch, we game. And then we're done. Um, but last night we finished our games and we were just kind of drinking and hanging out. So we kind of just like IRL streamed for a few hours and drank and hang out with you guys. And it was very, very reminiscent about how the podcast began in the first place, which is because that's like exactly what we did. Yeah. It's like we got got some drinks, we got online and we hung out. And um, so that was really cool. And I think it it comes right before our, sec- you know, our 200th episode. And last night we were... We were, we were talking about the podcast. We were talking about the stream. We were talking about everything. But um, it reminded me what that was like yeah. when we would hop on Ustream with our laptops and then, you know, record know. the thing. Well, people too last night were asking us if we would ever consider like not like making the podcast live all the time. Like maybe we start off having it like an event, you know, like a a Jenna Julian live on our Twitch stream. Like I, I think every that once that would be in totally a while. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it wouldn't like interrupt the flow of the podcast. It's not like you're like having callers or something that would be a, a sort of drastic change. It's like you have a live chat there and we can like, you know, read a couple comments and interact in that way. But to me, I'm like, it, I'm like, why would someone want to watch this live? But like, I get it. We get requests for that all the time. So, you know, maybe in the future, later in our, our late 200 episodes. I think we should absolutely figure out a way to do that. We can hey, have Pete, a live podcast. She's it's going nuts because there's so much girl, food on the table. Girl, it's not for you. Sit down. Oh, she can't. Um, yeah, I mean, last night, like, we were, we were, it was cool because we were having, like, our own conversations and, and, and stuff, but um, we were also just, like, sitting there, and that's, like, what's cool about the podcast. And I feel like, you know, the podcast has a really cool thing about it because over the years, we've kind of, Peach, stop. 
we've gotten to a point where um, you guys, you know, this has become part of your routine. You like listen to the podcast and you just want to kind of hear, hear what we have to say about whatever we're talking about, even if it's kind of like not even really that interesting. Um, and so w- when we, when we venture into trying doing the podcast live, which we don't know exactly when it'll happen or how often it'll happen or whatever, we just want to try it eventually. And so when we do that, we're going to do our best to like preserve what's so great about the podcast, but also enhance it with live. Yeah. But it was trippy, man. I was like rewatching some of our first few episodes, like not just now, but like earlier. And it is wild because we like we talk differently, like we look different. Mm -hmm. Everything's different. We're on our double laptops with USB mics. One of us is out of focus. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like we just kind of we're just kind of like all we claimed that we really like never wanted to have rules for the podcast but at the same time we were like trying to be like so podcast like i was like you know i don't know i just remember like i was sitting there like especially when we were sitting because we did a lot of podcasts like this we're like at a completely not even looking at each other yeah Yeah. and you know it's just funny to see like us figure the whole thing out for so many episodes but we had a lot of really fun episodes Mm -hmm. and we had a lot of really cool guests it's crazy to think about the guests we had because i i like forgot about a lot of them not like a way that they're forgettable but just like we had we have done so many episodes it's been a while it's yeah been a while. and we yeah we had our guests in a while Wait, when was the last time we had a guest i think chris and shan oh yeah or yeah i think it was chris and shan when we were at our old place we don't really have a lot of guests we don't <laughs> but we did we had this stretch where we like had a lot of guests mm-hmm. we had John Cochran, we had Jasmine Thompson, we had Rob Dyke, we had Chris and Shan, we had Jason and Gabs, we had Gabby, Gabby, we had Shane, which we we should fucking that would be awesome if we can get him on again because he's so fun to talk to. He's a busy boy. He is a busy boy. He's always welcome on this show. Y'all know that, but he is a busy boy. Um, yeah. Who else? Oh, Sarah from the challenge. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. We yeah. have French fries. We have French fries. We have Jay Walker, 80 Fitz. Yep, that's right. Both of them. I feel like there's more. Jay Cyrus. Oh, Freely the Banana Girl. You guys love that one. No. <laughs> Jay Cyrus. They did not love that. <laughs> that's my, That to date is my most disliked vlog on mm-hmm. my entire channel. It's when I vlogged her in our house. Um. Yeah, man. It's I don't know. It's just wild, dude. It's I don't know. It's wild. It is wild. It's wild. I'm eating French fries. How are your French fries? It's good as cheat day. I know. We we're we're this week was crazy, so we're recording on a Sunday. Well, we asked on Twitch, we were like, what do you guys want us to do for our two hundredth podcast? Because like I feel like we should do something special or like fun or celebratory. Yeah. And everyone's like, do another pizza party. I know. You guys literally spammed the chat with pizza so party. This is like I didn't want to eat pizza today because I wanted something else. I wanted French fries. But like I I can't think of any other like kids games other than the ones we played like hide and seek and like we stacked cups and like pin the tail on the donkey yeah i pretty much like i pretty much peaked the hide and seek game you can't really get better than that <laughs> no. that was the best it could get Mm-mm. you can't get better than that <laughs> what i got you dude i fucking got you got got you were sitting behind me on a step ladder like a gargoyle hell yeah dude where do you think we'll be in in our 400th podcast? I have no idea. Let's try to paint the picture. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Let's think. Okay. So it's been four years, just over four years mm-hmm. that we've had this podcast. It has? Yeah. 200 episodes, four years. Where has the time gone? Because it's about 50 episodes a year. Where has the time gone? I don't know. Where's the gone? It's gone into these hips, boy. Oh, shit. Oh, he thick. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So it'll be four years from now. Okay, so I'll be, fuck. 35? Yeah. And I'll be 29? Mm-hmm. We'll have two kids. Oh, won't that be so nice? You, five years from now, you get to be 20, 29. Jeez, calm down with that, okay? I'm an old soul. I'm your age right now. Just a different number. No, you are an Aries. Okay, can you fucking tell them what you said to me earlier? Can you please? Because that was just something that I'll never, ever ever get out of my head okay let's let's keep it like 
civil and cordial here because deciding to have kids or like figuring out if we can have kids oh, is yeah, like very like- intimate and all of that. We were joking about having kids and I was like sitting there in my uh, head go. and I was go. like, hey, I'm telling a story. She's, she's begging for food and she's interrupting the podcast. Peach, Peach, no, sit. no. I was figuring out in my head what month we would have to conceive in order to have an Aries baby. And I was like, no, no then. I'm, like, I cannot have an Aries child. I can't. I cannot. You said that to me while it's I was- like July. I June, was, July. I was talking to you about something completely separate. And you, like, you did, made this blank face. You're you being know? out of control. And you, the whole time you weren't even listening, you're like, okay. I was just thinking about what months we <laughs> can't have a kid in, or try to have a kid in. I can't have any Aries children. I can't. I think it'd be fun. I think you'd like it. No. I hope that they're little Virgos and that they they clean up after you and criticize you. Because you deserve extra (laughs) Virgo energy. Um, I do want to echo what you said, though. Um, It's super personal. And when we we decide, if we decide whatever to have kids, that's like 100% personal. So... If we can. Thank you for respecting that. I don't know if we can. Thank you for respecting that. Thanks for respecting my body. Ladies and gentlemen, because it belongs to me. I don't know where I was going before I got on that tangent. Ladies and men, and not binary friends. Hey, by the way, thank you guys all for all the nice comments, because I said that. And people were like, thank you, this is really inclusive. It's my pleasure. When did you say that? I said it on the podcast, and I said it in my video. And people were like, that makes you feel really good. I'm like, fuck, man. I wish I knew that sooner. I would have said it all the time. Boys and girls and dinks beyond the binary. Is and that so, good? Yeah, and well, and somebody told me that Thomas Sanders says guys and gals and nine non-binary pals. Um. Then someone in the comment was like, "How about <laughs> ladies and bros and non-binary amigos? Hose. Oh. Amigos. Oh, sorry, sorry, hoes would have been better. You though. ruined it. Non-binary hoes. I, you know what? I'm gonna enjoy my French fries and thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Shouts out to my non-binary hoes out there. You the real MVPs, all of you. What's wrong with you? What? Um, yeah. Hmm. Can, can, can I have one? Yeah, you can have I one. I don't want any. I We're celebrating. One. We're I eating French one. fries. We're having a good time. We are celebrating. I hope all your children are Virgos. You got to talk into the mic for the mic to work. May all your children be Virgos. <laughs> 200 episodes. She's still talking back. It's what the universe has decided <laughs> is your punishment for flossing with knives. Like I said last night, I don't care what season it is. I can always do the flossing dance with knives. So I can pretty much make it Aries season anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can have Aries kids. What would I be like with an Aries child? Oh my god, the toy would be fucking out of control. It'd be like, let's do this. No, let's do that. And you guys would both just like be doing the weirdest shit. And I'd be totally left out of the loop. I'd be upset. And then I'd have to clean up the mess you guys make afterwards. Are it would we, be really unfair. Are we having an imaginary preemptive argument right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Let's flip the coin then. If we have a Virgo kid. Like already in the in the five and a half years that I've been dating you. I feel like I've ta- no. I've I've been tamed from the inside out. Mm-hmm. On so many levels, I feel like I've been tamed, which is good because I didn't realize how Aries I was until you would point it out to me. But if we had a kid that was a Virgo, I think I might lose all all of the Aries about me. I think you might kill the Aries in me. Then what? Then I'm just another. Then we then we praise the Lord and <laughs> we live our lives normally. But what about me and my flair and color and personality? Man, what would I do without your flair and color and personality? <laughs> um, you'd be bored. If by flair and color you mean the time that you literally opened a banana from the peel side, like at the bottom, took the banana out and left the empty peel on the bunch of bananas, like, who, like I don't understand that thought process. I forgot. I forgot to throw it out. No, I literally just the other day I walked downstairs. Like you, you clean. You do like chores and stuff, which I deeply appreciate. But you you just have this thing in you you're where welcome. whenever you take something, like if you're gonna make a sandwich, like 
<laughs> you go and eat your sandwich and there's every single piece of everything that you have used to compile the sandwich to make the sandwich well, it's just everywhere i just don't understand the like instinct to take something out and never put it back for maximum speed when you're creating something like a meal you get started you get one ingredient out and then you just got to start stockpiling on top of that because as like you're you're literally going to take double the time to make the meal if you're running everything back to the fridge when you're done eating your hunger has subsided and you leave it all that's out that's when anyways. you get up and you slowly put everything no you don't do that back. you don't do that stuff. I, I do that you don't do that stuff <laughs> i do that no you leave stuff out overnight on the counter and then you wonder in the morning you're like wow i can't eat this anymore because i didn't put it back in the refrigerator i don't mind leaving food out do you <laughs> <laughs> no the, just the other day so he did that thing where he was like making a smoothie or something so there's like a bag of frozen fruit just left out on the counter to turn into a ball of muck and like the the almond milk like there's protein powder all over the place and there was a banana peel on the counter and i'm just like thinking to myself like that that's like something that a cartoon person does. They open a banana, <laughs> use the banana, and just throw the peel somewhere. Like you were a cartoon person. I throw <laughs> a cartoon person. Yes, you I'm, are. A, I'm a dope, dude. I am an exciting, high energy, very popular cartoon. That's what I am. I throw the cartoon. I throw the banana peel over my shoulder, and the guy behind me slips on it. No, I slip on it. Are you the guy behind me? No, I'm I'm like your personal <laughs> person that follows around the tornado, just frantically picking up after the tornado. Um, you I know think there's like game. You know they have like um simulator, not simulator, like, like like chore games. Like they have games where you can like clean up after someone, or you have like you. Uh, there's a new why? game where you unpack like after moving. Oh fuck that! <laughs> there's like there's games where you have to like stressfully like serve like meals into in a professional kitchen like things like things like you're describing that like cleaning up messes and stuff they actually have games for that so if you want to take your um energy and put it towards something constru constructive there might be a game for you what <laughs> there might be I swear to god <laughs> <laughs> this is the Aww. shit that i can't stand you test me in every way <laughs> You test me in every fucking way, Beach. You test me every day. It's like having an Aries and a Kermit. Every day the Lord be testing me. You know what I'm saying? He really out here testing me. <laughs> I'm testing you because it's standardized testing week, Beach. That doesn't make any sense. It's a test, Beach. Bitch, I'm 31 years old. <laughs> what the fuck are you even talking about? I'm the study for your Julian test. It what coming. Julian test? What's on the test? Nobody knows till it's here. Okay. You know what? Give me my I want back. both. No, you can't have both. Give it back. I think that the podcast has given us a platform Cut. Cut. to explore how Virgo and Aries, this is like a, a 200 episode long case study of Virgos and Aries having the ability to get along and, and co-function. Dude, what if, what if, okay, I'm not, I'm not admitting that this is the real thing, but what if? Jenna and Julian was just a bigger experiment that someone was coordinating to observe how an Aries and a Virgo live and work and interact together. Wow. Who would do that? Some very, very, very... Who gives a fuck? Probably a Virgo, honestly, because yeah, that's a really yeah, organized yeah, experiment. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to confirm or deny that that's happening. What'd you just do? See what I just said there? You just cleaned up a mess that wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. You like moved your hands all over the table like you're cleaning. No, my drink is like sweating a little. So there's like condensation. It's kind of wet. So I wiped it off. So it doesn't destroy the table. That's pretty. we don't have coasters. That's pretty weird. <laughs> Throws banana peel on counter behind back. All right. So. Milady. Hold on. We, we got distracted. 400 episodes. Uh-huh. On our 400th episode, we're going to have two kids. Both Aries. What? All right, one Aries, one love. Well, it one. makes you think we're going to have two kids in four years. In like, four years. You're telling me that I'm going to basically have like Irish twins? Yes. Sorry, I'm just throwing a scenario out here. Okay. One's name is Chad. <laughs> Absolutely the not. Others, yes. Absolutely that not. Was the one you, that was the one you named. So Absolutely I, no Chads. Nothing against Chads. But no, 
The other one's name is. Um, what was what's the other one's name? I forgot. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm 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 painting the picture of our life in four years. We have two kids. Yeah. One is Chad. You're painting a picture. One is oh, the other is not even our kid. It's Chad's friend. <laughs> he won't leave our house. So we have Chad and Chad's friend, but pretty much have two kids because his friend won't leave. We don't even know his name. We're now we've now moved the podcast to the kitchen, to where we just podcast um, down no, there. No, why? why not? No. Okay, we we stay in here. We're I don't still want pod- all this gear and all these lights in the kitchen. That's in four much. years, do you think we'll need all this gear? We're going to be podcasting through our, our brains, dude. We're going to put a chip inside our brain. It's going to be an audio chip. No, a video chip. Not in my body. It can go in your body. I'm the guy. I'll put it mm, in my body. I don't want that shit in my body. Okay, that's fine. I don't trust the government. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, we don't have to bring the government into this. <laughs> We're going to be podcasting remote of all this gear. We're not going to need all this gear okay. in four years. Actually, I really hope we will because we just got it all set up. That would suck <laughs> if in four years it's all like useless. <laughs> Fuck that. Keep going. That, how, old, how old is Chad? Three, dude. That makes no sense. Like, He's four. Mathematically makes no sense. He's four. He's four and a half, actually. <laughs> so I already had him? Uh, some might say. Or we entered a time warp, and four years is actually like 14 years. Okay. Chad's four. I don't have a son named Chad, and I never will. <laughs> um, it's our daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. It's okay. I don't even know where I was going with this. Who? Okay, new, new, new discussion. Who are some of your dream guests? Like dream guests. I get too nervous around people. I don't yeah, know. but yeah, but like if if that wasn't a factor, like if your oh. if your outrageous nerves weren't a factor, <laughs> 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 who would you dream to have on our podcast? I and, think- and I mean like not like fucking Rihanna. I mean we're never gonna get her on the podcast, but like someone that is actually a. a even a long shot of a possibility to be here mm. in our house. I think someone from the gaming community would be really cool. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, most people don't live in Los Angeles. Or That's they false. Do. A lot of people live in Los Angeles. No, not everybody. Well, like, not everybody because there's other places. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just won two to nothing. <laughs> I hate you right now. <laughs> I think it'd be really cool to interview somebody like Shroud or like Ninja. Super. I think we could have some really interesting conversations with someone that's like sort of changing the way that Twitch or something yeah. is working. Because we yeah. wouldn't just talk about games and shit. Oh, I would no, for love sure. to talk to them about other stuff. Yeah, I feel like both of them. I mean, I think having Shroud would be really rad. But uh, same with Ninja. The only thing that sucks is that they'd have to just sit right here in this little last spot and we'd both look at them not, like this. It's not little. We can see. It'd be we, really fun. Dude, this, okay. Mm. We scoot our chairs out. Shroud's hanging from his feet from the ceiling. Like we talked about last time. Hanging from his feet? Mm-hmm. And he does the or, whole thing upside down. Like Spider-Man? Mm-hmm. I think it would be cool to have a guy like Shroud on or a guy like Ninja or anyone who's Chocolate like Taco. Pu- anyone who's pushing the mold in, in gaming right now because um, like you said, it's way past gaming and right now is, is sort of like a really interesting time to see where things go. Chocolate Taco is a Virgo. We would have a good time. He is a Virgo, isn't mm-hmm. he? And you would feel left out. I would bring Anthony. If you brought Chocolate, I would bring Anthony. I need my Aries. Fuck, I, no. need, I need. No. Okay, if you're no. bringing a Virgo into this no, room, two I'm Aries bringing an out. Aries. No, that's too you many know Aries. What? That reminds me. That's I'm gonna, too many Aries. When he's in LA, I'm going to invite him over. I want to just like hang out and do some activities with him. Like That's just like too- physical activity. See what we can muster up around the house and like build some stuff. And- Stay out of the kitchen. No, no, no. We're going to make some food. He likes food. No, you guys can go out to eat. <laughs> we're going in to eat. <laughs> no, no. We're eating in. Get out of my space with your Aries friends. <laughs> Anthony, you hear that? I'm inviting you over for dinner anytime, dude. Just bring that energy and no. we're good. No. What? I said no. Okay, then Chaco can't come over and be a Virgo. Chaco, I'm sorry, but if there's two Virgos in the house, I'm outnumbered. I can't handle that. We'll have Why? Because we're too fucking logical and practical and reasonable for and you. Slow and buy the book <laughs> and reading recipes and shit. Okay, we'll have both. If you want, you can have your honorary Virgo and all. That's what we should do. We should have a podcast where you bring a Virgo and I bring an Aries <laughs> and we just fucking battle it out. Okay. 
What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that'd be fun. We all sit facing each other. <laughs> we just argue. It's like dual style. Yeah, we argue. Um, you guys would get so fucked up. <laughs> How would we get oh, fucked we up? Just I'd you, say dude. that we could we could do things like certain tasks, right? Like one would have to require following directions, like maybe make like a Lego set, and we'll see which one works better. The this, ones that okay. are practical and logical, or the ones that are just out of control and they've already lost four pieces on the ground. This is um, a game show idea. This mm-hmm. isn't a podcast. This is like a full blown like this could be a whole YouTube channel or something. Channel? I think it could be a video. No, like. It's different people every week, is what I'm saying. Like, so, okay, so we have like a, a problem solving activity. We have a speed activity. Mm-hmm. We have um, a following instructions activity. <laughs> and then we have just like a straight up, um, like random wildcard one. So then there's like, it's kind of balanced, but then the Aries will always find a way <laughs> to dominate and come out on top. <laughs> sure, whatever you say. I have a question. What? Who do you think you are? I don't have a question. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You didn't really answer your question, though. What was the, the question? The dream guest. Yes, I did. Oh, you said Trout. Yeah. But uh, dream guest, like the best guest ever would be Seth MacFarlane. But I'm too nervous to ever do something like that. I can't. Plus, he'd have to come into our house. Like, everybody would have to come into our house. Like, that's so extra why is it extra i don't know i just feel bad being like you don't have like a studio you're like yeah come to my house so, like the little one's gonna bark at you but like try to just ignore him i'm really sorry i mean it's but like who cares if we don't have a studio we have a studio in our house dude after they dude after they come over to podcast mm-hmm. we, we'll have a play date that's the best part of having a podcast in your house that's There's, fun i like play it's like a built-in play date that's fun who's your dream guest thank you <laughs> Jeez, dude. some people um my dream guest. Damn, I honestly didn't think you would ask. Is it Chad, your son, your daughter? My daughter, my daughter Chad. Who's four and a half? Um, my dream guest would be... I don't know, honestly. I would have to say... Uh, I don't know. Maybe Jeff Probst. <gasps> Jeff you know, we like... Probst is my father. No, I don't know. I'm just picking random names. I, I'm honestly like, I don't know. I think the gaming thing would be cool. Anyone on Twitch would be really cool. Anyone like Joe Rogan in the you would want Joe Rogan on the podcast. I love him. That that's like your ultimate podcast. Yeah. I feel like as long as Jamie can come and hang out, I'm done. I like Jamie a lot. He helped us with this whole setup. Jamie did. He helped us get our audio not sounding like shit. But um, Joe Rogan would be cool. But that's like. It- it could never happen, but it's it, like if we're just. Playing, but what could happen is you going on his podcast. Was the dreamiest. Would you do that if you, if you're? I'd be too nervous. Head? You'd be too nervous. Yeah. All right. I'll get really hot, and then I get a hive on my neck. You know, like when I was in school, sometimes when I get real nervous, I get a big hive like all the way down my neck, because that just means that I'm nervous, and people would be like, "Are you okay? You have a hive on your neck," and I was like, "No, not really." Do you get nervous hives? I'm going to die of hives. You're not going to die of hives. Dives. I'm diving. Dying of hives. Wow. Wow. That was a lot. It was just really embarrassing. Like when you're in a situation where you're not supposed to be nervous and you just get a bunch of hives all over your neck and like you can just like see them appearing all up my neck. And I get like, hives. I don't, I don't get hives from nerves though. I get, get hives, hives from, from Kermit. But like literally just from Kermit. And allergies. Watch that. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> Remember all the fights we used to have on the early podcasts? What kind of fights? I don't know. Like we didn't have our, we didn't have our, our like we weren't dialed in yet. We were kind of just figuring it out. So I would say, I would like go off on a tangent and you'd be like, we weren't going to talk about that. I don't know. I, I guess like, I don't remember anything. I feel like I would read about it in the comments the next day a lot. People would be like, oh, they're really, really not on the same page. But it happens. Well, it's also part of like the learning curve of like, A, doing a podcast, doing a podcast with your significant other. Yeah. And sometimes you just fucking disagree or. That's true. That's another thing. That's it. like, that's thing. That, I feel like that's one of the things this podcast has taught me is like being able to have a conversation in a constructive or even just like productive yeah. way. Well, you can just disagree. You know, like nobody needs to win an argument or whatever. Stop pointing my mic and telling me to talk into it, you you little Aries. All right, sorry. What? I am talking about a mic. I'm talking into my mic. 
Where do you think I'm talking? Look at Happy 200th episode. Look at how I'm talking. What a here. celebration. Look at how I'm talking. Look at how I'm talking. Look at how I'm talking. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> look at me. Now look back at you. Now look at me. I'm a horse. <laughs> it's like those old spice. Cards. I know what it is. I know what it is. No, I tried to pull the arm closer to me, and you told me to be careful of my water, which is closed and sealed and isn't going to knock over. And then you told me to talk closer to my mic. Mm-hmm. Okay. I miss the days when you used to just adjust my mic for me like a hundred times or adjust your mic a hundred times. I feel like people would always talk about that in the comments. Stop touching the mic. <laughs> All right. What? Nothing. Why are you looking at me like that? Nothing. I'm just thinking about some things. Like what? Just how comfortable I am in my meandies. Meandies.com <laughs> slash Anna Julian. You're the worst. Well, I'm not the worst. We don't have to. That'll, that'll just be a false start. I'll do another one later. We'll, we'll keep talking. What are you doing? I'm putting my foot on you. I'm on foot rest. But it feels good. Okay. I have an interesting thought. What? Would you ever do one of those um, DNA tests? No. Why not? Because I don't like the conspiracies around it. What's a conspiracy? You know what they are. What that they're keeping your DNA to like clone you? Yeah, well, that kind of thing. Didn't Shane talk about it in one of his videos? He did a good job explaining it. Did he actually? Okay, yeah, go ahead. But it's basically that, you know, they have all these YouTubers promoting it and shit. So they're, they're, they basically, in all of their terms of use and services or whatever, like, are really very unclear about what they have control over and don't have control over, like, in terms of your DNA. Like, if you, they can sell it to whatever the fuck they want. Like, they're unclear about what they're allowed to do? Yeah. So there's a theory that they're going to sell it to like your data to like drug companies and then they can use that information to formulate drugs for people and, you know, charge top dollar for that. There's another one that they're trying to create some type of like anti-aging thing from that. So then by the time you're 60 years old, they're like, hey, here's your DNA from when you were 17 if you'd like to buy it back from us. And you know, and then you become like 17 again? Yeah, like a looks wise. That sounds good, dude. Why would you, why would you argue with that? I don't think I would ever want to look seventeen again. Uh, that's a movie. Did you know that with Zac Efron? They filmed it at my high school. Sorry. No. Okay. And the other one that's really weird is that like nothing against Mormons or Mormon people, but they all like a lot of those companies are owned by Mormons, and there is a theory. It's not my theory that. They are using your DNA that even after you die, you can be like adopted into the Mormon faith. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the theory. And so that they just want to, you know, save everyone with their DNA. That's creepy to think that like after you die, you're going to be like admitted, not admitted, but like taken into a religion that you never like. Yeah. Like who ca- I'd of. say that's like, you know, the least of the least of what you would have to worry about with those things. But it is kind of weird. But wouldn't you be interested in like knowing about like your DNA and like what you no you know what your lineage is and maybe what your what what they think some of your characteristics might be based on your DNA? No, I believe my parents when they say that we're mostly European and uh, that's about it. I'm cool. I don't need to know everything. I I would consider it. I don't know if I would do it, but I would definitely think about it. Maybe I should do some more research, and then I might just and then I might just get my DNA. Didn't they use examined. like one of those DNA kits, like someone's relative had used it and then they found the Golden State Killer or whatever by using that information? So ba- so DNA. someone, so the killer's relative used that DNA kit? Right, yeah, because it's not just whoever, you know, uses it. It's all the people that you're related to. Yeah, so feasibly, like you should probably get your family's opinion or approval before you do something like that. That's what I think. Yeah, like because what if, what if I were to just like... Hey, here's my DNA. And then like one of my cousins was like, yo, dude, I'm on the lamb here. Why'd you do that? (laughs) But it's it's not the concept of like using it to solve crimes. It's like the government now has access to your personal DNA. Like we don't know what they're going to do with it. Like there's a reason why you have checks and balances and how much information the government can have of yours. It's incredibly creepy. That's the whole privacy conversation about like 
how much is too much how much is legal and how much is like incredibly invasive yeah and dna is sort of like the last thing that you truly have that's yours your body your genetic code and if you sort of just sell it to some company that doesn't really tell you exactly what they're going to do with it in the future you know you've given away your one sacred thing that you have control over that's what i think i i mean i agree with you uh uh a lot that it's like super sus and then also the it's fact a that it's a little too sus well and also the fact that they their target demo was like youtubers and like they were doing brand deals and they were like sponsored the yeah at the streamies, the streamies yeah right? they were li- like there was a 23 and me kit on the every table, table. Yeah. which is like so they sponsored the show but i had already known about 23 me just because i've seen their name on like youtube like brand deals before like i've seen people post pictures i've seen people post videos right and i've always like they're always like kind of ambiguous looking media and you're like oh what are they advertising and then it's like a dna kit and you're like what the, what the fuck like that's so bizarre and it's so like it's troubling to me that that's the market they go after because yeah. there's so many young viewers on youtube who might just be like whoa because i mean i don't know like well, here's the thing. So I don't. I feel like I don't have any problem with the. All right, where someone's going to take a sample of your blood or your spit or your DNA, mm-hmm. and we're going to give you an assessment of your your health risks or your you know that kind of thing. Like I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Nor do I think that there's anything wrong with understanding your lineage. Like all that's really cool. It's just that the companies and like the wording of what they're going to do with it sounds pretty too. It's like, yay capitalism. We got something. We're not going to tell you what we're going to do with it, but we're either going to make a lot of money with it someday or we're going to be just fucking corrupt. What do you think would happen if a company came out and was like, we're not going to tell you what we're going to do? Like even more like bleak in how they stated it. Like <laughs> we're not going to tell you what the fuck we do with your DNA, but we'll pay you $1,000 to give it to us. That's terrifying. Like that, that to me is like the next level of this because right now they're like, yeah, buy our kit. It's a good price. And look at this like happy, good looking YouTuber. They're also advertising it. So they're making it appealing. But what if they're just straight up, we'll pay you for your DNA, which I think they kind of already do in some instances, but like a kit like this, I don't know. That would be Mm -hmm. crazy. I feel like I'm, I'm cool. Like knowing my family history and having a relatively good understanding of like what our health history is and like things that we should look out for and be careful of. But like, other than that, I'm all set. I don't know what that kit would give me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Creepy. Give you the creeps is what it would give you. Yeah. Well, I know like speaking of stuff like that, like I know some of you guys, like your favorite podcasts are conspiracy theory ones and that kind of thing. Cause we all like those, but like, they're so hard because the only ones to me that are like worth talking about at all are things that are even like mildly like they could be possible, which is why you don't see like a thousand conspiracy videos all the time because yeah. it's like the good ones are hard to find. Yeah, they're hard to find and they're also hard to like turn into a podcast. Yeah. Well, some of them are just like videos or like EVPs or like, you know, things where you kind of have to watch and or listen and see some of it. And then all of that stuff can be completely fake, you know? So that's not necessarily a good conspiracy theory, but like... But that doesn't mean you shouldn't tweet us your really good conspiracies that you yeah. find because you know some of the I best did, ones we've discussed have been I did see tweeted. one recently. This isn't a conspiracy theory, but it was a cool theory. What? That someone had said that birthmarks were like uh, me- meant that you were killed in your past life and where your birthmark is, is where you were killed. What? What yeah. if you have one on your toe? I don't know. What if you have one on your butt? You got. What if you got hit by a car? A bayonet. You, okay. We don't know when you died. That's weird. That's that. The, With that, a cannon. That's not a good theory. I think that's a stupid theory. You got bit by a mermaid. I think it's a stupid theory because birthmarks. Like what? How many birthmarks are right there? How many times did I die? On Those my arm? are moles. That's not a birthmark. A birthmark's like a, a big one. Oh, I have one on my butt. You do? Yeah. What? You've seen my butt. You should know that. <laughs> I haven't seen a birthmark on your butt. Show it. Show me. Under the table. Early out. Go over there. They can't see. You really have never seen this? You have hair on your butt, and I'm not staring at your butt. That's not a birthmark. That's a mole. No, that's a birthmark. No, it isn't. It's over here. Hold on. <laughs> You don't have a birthmark on your butt. Yeah, I do. Just like I said. It's a birthmark. No. It is, I, it is, Jenna, it is the Virgo, I'm right. Peach, don't get up. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
It is a birthmark. That's not... I've had it since birth. It's a birthmark. It's a mole, Julian. Birthmark. Well, how do you differentiate? Just like instantly looking at it. Because it's just a mole. No, it's a birthmark. Let me see it again. <laughs> no, you have to come close to me. Just show me. Just come close. I don't know why you keep like taking your pants down. It's like on your waistline. Like what, what are you doing? You're just mooning me for the sake of mooning. <laughs> it's me. like for those kids in like elementary school who would put their pants down to their ankles to pee at the stall. No, put their pants down to their ankles and pull their shirt all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an Aries move. Hmm. That's an Aries move because it's quick and it's effective, and it's messy. Come here, baby girl. Come here. You know what else is quick and effective is uh, Postmates, Whoa. guys. If you want some food delivered to your house, use Postmates. It's the app that delivers where delivery is not an option. So if you like fast food or if there's a local restaurant that you really crave, but you're like, dude, I'm on my couch. Nothing is going to get me up, not even this meal. Get on Postmates. Look and see what they have. The odds are that they will have that restaurant and they can deliver it to your front door for uh, a, a small delivery fee and right now you get a hundred dollars towards your delivery credit so it won't even be a delivery f- fee in the first seven days when you use our code which is jenna julian uh, postmates is on the second page of my apps on my phone that is a real fact and i use it all the time uh postmates it's dude if i need basil if i need peanuts if i need one thing i will literally refuse to go out and i would just postman it to my front door so right now guys check it out just give it a shot i've used a lot of delivery apps and this is by far the best one and i think you guys already know that because i've talked about postmates way before we were even sponsored by them but check it out go to postmates uh, on the app store uh, or the google play store or whatever phone you have download the app and use code jenna julian you get a hundred dollars of free delivery credit for your first seven days and they're coming to more cities right <laughs> They're do they're they're constantly. Expanding. If you didn't use have Postmates, you should try checking. Keep again checking. Yeah. yeah, they are always moving into new places. They're doing big things just so you could eat the food that you want to eat. Also, guys, me undies. Does your undies drawer need a refresher? Because the odds are it yeah. does. Okay, you can refresh it perfectly with a MeUndies membership. Every month, MeUndies releases a new exclusive print made in collaboration with an artist or brand that only members can get. And with a special member pricing, you guys will also pay less for everything on the MeUndies website. So not only will you have the consistent undies being delivered to you, and not only will they be exclusive because you have the membership, but you will also get a discount on anything else on the website with that membership. Um, so if you want a second pair of undies, a bralette, a lounge pants, or even some socks, you'll pay less than anybody else. Um, and the membership comes with no strings attached. You can switch styles, skip a month, or cancel at any time. If your bum hasn't tried MeUndies yet, they're the softest underwear in the world, dude. Three times softer than the cotton. You have no idea what you're missing. Try it out. They come with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love it, Send it back for a full refund. Go to MeUndies, that's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian to get 15% off your first pair. And also, guys, feed your dog some high quality food with the farmer's dog. This is so cool. So what I did, um, this is like defrosting, that's why I have this towel right here. Um, as I went on the website, I entered all the information about our three pets and you enter what kind of dog they are, what they generally like to eat, what their eating habits are, how big they are. And basically they send you this awesome like box filled with individual packets like with labels for your specific dog which dog gets what so cute and it's high quality delicious food for your dog okay it's made fresh you keep it frozen and then when you're ready to feed them you defrost it and you feed them and the dogs will lose their mind for it even peach and kermit right now he's choking underneath the table he's so excited to eat this farmer's dog um you it's just like a really small questionnaire and they develop the meal perfectly for your dog. So you have to do none of the work. You don't have to shop in the pet store, like what kibble to get. You don't have to like try to force your dog to eat if they're not hungry because they they don't want to eat that disgusting kibble anymore. You just give them a, a farmer's dog meal and they're just so excited. And they're going to love you more, guys. This is also a good way to bribe your pet. <laughs> Start feeding your dog better today. Get 50% off your first two week trial um, of healthy dog food at thefarmersdog.com. That's T H E F A R M E R S D O G dot com slash Jenna Julian. Get your fifty percent off. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. And, and thank you, sponsors, for um, supporting us up to two hundred yeah, episodes. Seriously, Pretty I wild. remember we were so excited when we first got our first sponsor. That was so exciting. That was with Shane, right? Kermit really wants that food now. 
They're so cute. It says Peach's Beef Recipe. Mm -hmm. Kermit's Turkey Recipe. Well, we, we, they, we had them on like freeze-dried patties, and yeah. we would occasionally run out of dog food and then be like super fucked because it would be like, you know, a time when we can't just go run and get dog food. And we're like, all right, what do you guys want? Treats? Should I make you some rice? <laughs> well, for real, like um, there would be a lot of times where like it's, it's like nine o'clock, all the stores have closed, and we like didn't even think. <laughs> yeah about the fact we that we didn't have dinner. dinner so like yet. the fact that you can kind of like freeze these and have them in your freezer is nice yes but i love you so much and you're handsome how do you spell this with a k c-a-t-s-u-p no ketsup. i don't like that no it's ketsup. no it's not it's not catsup why like they have a bed like why do they both need to be sitting in my lap because they're just needy animals i really like them that was one of my favorite You don't get to complain about their eating because you love it. I think we like roasted the dog sort of, where we like told stories about them. With them right in front of us? Yeah. They haven't sat up here on the, in the new setup. I know. We have the, the rack right there, so they might not be able to. I like our conspiracy theory podcasts. Hi, bud. I like, um, I'm really proud of some of the games that we came up with and that Me we too. played. The, the, um, the roulette ones are really good. Yeah. But we just like made that up. Clickbait roulette is probably, I think I invented that game and I'm pretty happy about it. Go, Peachy. No, Clickbait no. roulette turned out really good. All of our, um, what is it? The bomb shelter ones? Nuclear winter. Nuclear winter. Those are good, dude. Yeah. We should we should put a new twist on that and do that, and do that again. That would be fun. Was that the one where we... <laughs> where we had <laughs> developed characteristics yeah. for each person? Uh, one was like... Or was it presidential roulette? Because we had the four candidates. We've done both. We've done both. And then we were like, who are you going to vote for if they had X, Y, and Z characteristics? And Gary Johnson kept winning, and I was just like cracking the fuck up. Yeah. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of people just like the podcast where we just like sit and shoot the shit and talk. Yeah. I like yeah. those two. I like those two. And I like, I like what's come out of a lot of those podcasts because a lot of... Sometimes the conversation we have in the podcast where we just kind of decide we're going to talk mm -hmm. like becomes for me the most stimulating to like rewatch and listen to. And I think you guys enjoy it too. Well, yeah, because we're just sitting here having a conversation. You don't know where it's going or anything, you know? Yeah. Like you just go with the flow. Dude, just go with the flow. <laughs> like, dude, the f like, like, what is this? It's the color red, dude. How crazy is that? Okay, you know, that's, you know what I mean? That's, that's like a, a little reach. bit mind blowing. I think you might pull a muscle from that reach. Be careful. Just saying, it's colors, dude. You know. Oh my god. Um, I adore. Uh, Julian sucks at celebrity trivia. And music. I don't. And TV and movie songs. I don't adore that. Those have all been very fun. Like some of my favorite like moments were when we figured out that you can't tell Julia Roberts, Anne Hathaway, and Sandra Bullock apart. That happened on the podcast, like the very first time that I figured that out. You that discovered that I had that defect, <laughs> yeah. or I couldn't tell those people apart. That's like one of my favorite things ever that you can't tell them apart. Mm. I also appreciate the fact that we've been able to kind of use the podcast as. Um, a platform to talk about issues that might not be easy to talk about in general, but also easy to talk about like on our channels or yeah. elsewhere. Um, like in the, in the four years that we've been having this podcast, there have been a lot of things that have happened both in our community and just in the world that we've been able to kind of get on here and have a conversation about in a, in like a civil collected way. Well, yeah, it's been, and I've always said this, that it's been really liberating for me to have like a separate platform where we can just sort of sit and talk because in the past I would, if I wanted to say something about something like your choices are to tweet it, like that was, you know, put it on Facebook or write a whole blog post if I wanted to mm -hmm. or make a video. And if you choose to make a video, you're still in those like, you know, 2013 or 2012 confines of like, it needs to be under three minutes and it needs to be entertaining, which sucks so because be sometimes you just you want to voice your opinion or yeah. have something to say, you know, cause you're a human being, but mm -hmm. you, you're like, it needs to be funny and entertaining, which sucks. Cause sometimes you just want to say what you think. Mm -hmm. But this has given me and you the opportunity to just 
you know, say, speak your mind or say something that you want to say mm -hmm. without the pressures of it being, you know, an entertaining video. Yeah. And it's also let me like kind of spread my interviewing wings a little bit. From yeah, you're time good to at time, interviewing Even if people. it's just interviewing you. I'm not. I'm not good at interviewing people. I'm, it's a skill I do not uh, possess. It's debatable, but I think it's just fun more than anything to be able to like to talk to someone and ask them questions that you maybe think that they haven't answered before yeah. in like a really like conversational way. Mm -hmm. Um like shit dude we watched the challenge for how many years and then had a cast member on the show yeah that was like, really, that's really cool. cool that's really cool it's cool to think back on things like that especially cocker and like he's a cool dude and we'll text from time to time and we met because dude the podcast like yeah. that's fucking insane he won survivor oh, yeah, yeah, by the way it's coming yeah, back yeah, do you know what they're doing this season oh, yeah, no i don't know i all don't kids. know what what they're all kids it's a survivor kids up season coming up that's a lie. Dude, I just got you so bad live on the podcast. No, you didn't. I got you. I just said, no, it's Subscribe not. Subscribe for more pranks. They can't legally like do that, can they? No, really? Can you no. imagine Survivor Kids? Survivor and, kids and the producers are in the, are in the, the back night. and they're like, be more fucking cutthroat. No, you, you cut Jared, okay? They, you cut all, they would literally all cry on the first night. Of course they would cry. They would, dude. I, dude if I was a kid, kids, I would just stupid. cry for like... I had to fly on a plane and I miss my mom. Stupid kids, dude. Seriously, are you excited You're a for lot. the new Survivor? I know I'm a lot. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm always excited. Like John Cochran said, even, you know, when there's nothing on TV, what did Survivor's you say? Survivor's the best. Survivor, even when Survivor's not good, it's still the best thing on TV. I yeah, think yeah, yeah that was it. That was it. Because really, it is. I'm really good with words mm -hmm, and remembering mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And you have your Love Island. I love Love Island. We had a long conversation about that last night. I really, yeah. Well, okay. So for those of you that didn't see that, which whatever. Whatever you want to call I, it. A lot it of you was. guys were telling me to watch Love Island. And I like, I really got into it. So I've watched the first two seasons completely. And then I'm like a quarter to a third of the way into the third season. The ones that are available on Hulu. I don't know if there's like, you know a million more seasons but those are the ones that i've been watching and it's i just like the comparison between that show and american reality shows is like blatant you know like they just have cameras up and the most entertaining things are just people living their lives whereas an american reality show is like so heavily focused on the drama and the fights and like if something epic doesn't happen you know they're they're seen as like a boring show or you know what i mean yeah, and you were like you were sort of arguing last night that despite the fact that there are moments where it might feel like people are just trying to be like entertaining and on TV, it is like a genuinely like voyeuristic experience watching yeah. Love Island because you're yeah. just you're a fly on the wall basically. Yeah. And I think that those people come across as like really genuine and they're like really. Sweet. Who's your favorite couple or person? Just for those Love Island folks out there, come on. Who's your favorite one? Give us one. I really liked uh, John and Hannah mm -hmm. on the first season. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I like John and Hannah too. Their, that first fight they had was a little... You didn't watch any of it. You've never seen any of Love Island. But I'm good at bullshitting, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, someone on Twitch was like, Jenna, Love Island's horrible. Like, I think that it, it gives people, you know, an a unrealistic view of, like, love or relationships. And we talked about that for a little bit. Mm. Because I think that that's you know, not necessarily false. There are young people, like the people that they cast for the show are between the ages of like 19 and like 24. Usually. And they're all beautiful. And they're all incredibly beautiful. And like, of course, they're all probably going to date for a month or two and then break up, you know, because that's like what you do when you're 19. But like, as far as dating in reality shows go, it's, it's more on the spectrum, like on the side of the spectrum where it's like really real. It's on that side of it though. Yeah. As far as those side. shows go. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you don't watch Love Island to get a perfectly accurate depiction of what a normal couple goes through yeah. when, they, when they date. And well, if you yeah, are, so you're at like, the wrong place. For example, like I like to watch Love Island like when I'm doing cardio like on the bike or something. I'm just sitting there and like chilling and watching it. So I was watching Love Island at one point during the day. Mm -hmm. And then later on at night, we were watching Bachelor in Paradise. And like the difference between the two is mm. ridiculous. Mm. Everything's so produced. Yeah, they're just like, dip. they're like, hi, oh my God. And they like walk down to the bar and they're like having this, you know, orchestrated conversation about what's going on. Like everything is so. And the camera is already focused on the person reacting because yeah. they know what that person has been told to like. 
get up there with them. Yeah, or they like, you know, the, on Love Island, the most that they'll sort of like produce it is like they'll have a challenge set up or something for them or like, you know, they can win a date. But or that's something. just for content purposes. Yeah, but it's not like a, we brought in your fucking, you know. Yeah, dude, d- dude, don't even, don't even. When they brought in Becca and Bachelor in Paradise just to walk through the fucking beach and yeah. piss everyone off, like what in the world? Well, to be fair, so they do bring people's exes in on Love Island, but I, th- I feel like their reactions are genuine and how they handle everything is genuine you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like the producers do throw a wrench every once in a while but i i feel like for the most part it seems like a true to life how someone would handle that situation it's not this like overblown over dramatic like everything the world's ending you know what i mean yeah yeah i don't know i'm just I really like. I just like watching the other thing people about, live their the lives. Thing about anything that has to do with The Bachelor now is like I watched that show Unreal. We watched what there's three seasons of it or two seasons of it. I forget. We watched however many seasons there are, um, and like that show is amazing, and I really enjoyed it, and it's a brilliant television show. But at the same time, now I cannot watch The Bachelor or The Bachelorette with those same rose-colored glasses that I had on before yeah. because now I'm just like I'm seeing everything that's happening. I'm seeing all the strings being pulled, and I kind of fucking hate it yeah. because I feel. I sort of like feel for some of the people who are on the show. Ouch. Most of the people, they're like, eh, you know, I don't, I don't feel too much for them. But you know, like, um, yeah, like what's that couple's name? Carly and uh, Evan. Evan, Carly and Evan. Like Aww. those to me, like I love that couple, and I yeah. love that they kind of like made it out of that world. Yeah, and became. Uh, a real thing but yeah just, for the most part i'm just like watching and i'm like the more miserable someone gets or the more like and you can tell these people like you can tell when they're playing it up but you can yeah. also tell when they're just like generally like fucking pissed and like not excited to be there and like just really regretting a lot of shit yeah and I it just, just sucks because that that's like their ideal situation those right. producers that's what they want they want these people to be fucking breaking down and i hate that. that yes and i think that that's like one of the largest differences is I, I feel like a love island sort of thrives on the people are finding love and that's what we really want when in theory so does the bachelor or the bachelor in paradise but they're so focused on the tears the breakdown the meltdown the 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 this that everything's going wrong they yeah. they focus on the like doom and gloom whereas love island like they really sort of like encourage that like everybody get along and like be friends and you know if you can't work it out that's okay but like people apologize to each other and like you know make sure that they're trying to handle the situation the best that they can or they'll talk to their friend and their friend's really honest with them it's not like yeah dude let's go beat up our housemate you know well and also another thing is i've only watched over the shoulder a couple episodes of love island because i like i really haven't spent the time to watch it like you have but from what i have seen there's been more than a handful of instances where i'm just like watching a couple lay down in bed and just like hang like they kind of want to be just doing that like you know like say you and i met on love island right and we have this instant connection we've both realized right away like this is my person whatever Mm -hmm. you don't really care too much about the extraneous shit going on in the house you just want to like hang out with that person and i see that i actually saw that a lot on love island but that's 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 a sign of me it's like yeah yeah because on like the bachelor the bachelor in paradise like they don't get the choice to do that no. Right? They like they have to go no, do... No, the moment someone's comfortable with another person, they bring another person in to fuck everything up. No, but they're... No, I'm saying they're confined to like actual filming hours, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like they have structure during the day so because they have to be they're, like on because they're filming. Yeah. Whereas Love Island, there there aren't camera people. There's just cameras in the wall. So like, yeah, you're doing what you would usually do with someone when you're you like them. You're just like laying down and hanging out and like talking. So 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 Bachelor in Paradise, like, there's filming hours. Yeah, they have like dates. You know what I mean? And then everyone so else, like, they'll like go downstairs deliberately. Like, they're not really filming them, like laying around and doing nothing because hmm. they can't do nothing. They're at work. They all know that. Hmm. You That's know what I'm saying? That's interesting. I guess I didn't really thought of it like that. I mean, I guess it, like like you watch Unreal and you see like they they're they cut and they're just like walking around and not really doing it. Like yeah, that. but they have like a proper production, yeah. so like they have a camera crew that has filming hours. Yeah, like, but it's possible they to they're be filming not around standing the there like filming them while they sleep. Yeah, no, you know, I know what I mean. I know, I know. No, you're right. Plus, they can't just like hang out with the Bachelor. That's the whole point. No, so, I'm like, talking more about Bachelor in Paradise than anything. I think Bachelor has more problems, but. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I get it. There are no like production hours in like a Big Brother house or like a Love Island house. Whereas on a show like The Bachelor or The Bachelor in Paradise, it's like we're not filming you during certain hours. So that's 
begs the question. That's if, why they all wake up and they've all got mad makeup on and shit. They know what time they come in. So if <laughs> if Bachelor in Paradise or Bachelor was filmed in the Big Brother style with cameras on the wall everywhere and there were no real... It'd be um, funny, man. You think it'd be better or worse? I think it'd be more real and it would be better because I prefer things that are a little more real. I think it'd definitely be more real, but I don't think it would be on TV. Because mm. they like they, that show exists because it's like... It's yeah. the most produced thing in the world. Whatever. I like Love Island, and I want to say thank you guys to for suggesting that to me. It's not like the best show in the whole world. Is it my favorite show in the whole world? No, but I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. That's dope. And there's so many fucking episodes. Yeah, you've been watching that shit for weeks, dude. How many episodes are there? There was like 40 last season. 40, 40 one, in one season? hour episodes, yeah. And they're in the house for... Like a couple months, I think. Jeez, dude. So they really show you and like so everything. Each season is it is it new people? Yeah. Whole entire new people. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So they resolve all the storylines, well, so to speak, relationship stories as the season ends. So you kind of see if they stay together, broke up. And then I Google it after. Do people leave? Mm hmm. Is that part of it, or do people just leave mm -hmm. when they want to leave? Oh, okay. no, it's part of it. Yeah. How? What? What qualifies like getting kicked out of the house? You don't get kicked out. What is leaving? What is that? What happened? You have to couple up. And if you don't, you're gone. Yeah. That's sad. That's like Bachelor in Paradise. It is. But they like cry, you know? Hmm. Some of them are sad to leave. Well. Anyway, guys. <laughs> no. Nothing. Just closing the episode. It was fun. I feel like I celebrated because I ate french fries, you know? I do too. I feel like I celebrated a little bit. Maybe not as much as I could have. I love French fries. I'll really celebrate when we get to 500. That's an impressive number. <laughs> 200 is me. I'm pretty proud of it though. I'm, I'm proud of where we've grown this thing. I also want to say thank you guys for continuing to hang out with us or finding anything fun in our podcast because it's like we just like to sit here and have a good time. I'm glad you guys also have a good time. You know? Yeah. yeah. I never would have, honestly, I never thought I would have a podcast. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I'd have a podcast like this mm -hmm. where I just sit with my girlfriend and talk and we have fun most times and we play games. I'm like, I don't know. I like Who having have thought fun that most that would, times. I don't know. Just crazy to think about, man. But yeah, thank you guys for supporting us and listening to us <gasps> for so many hours. That's now over roughly probably 200 hours that well, you just well, listened to us ramble about nothing. I ate all my french fries. Perfect timing. And you can Postmate some more right now. <laughs> well, thank you guys for hanging out for this podcast and the 199 prior. Um, if you guys have any uh, dream guests of your own, let us know. Who knows, man? Who freaking knows? Crazier things have happened. Mm -hmm. Or if you have any feedback of what you'd like in the future. I mean, no promises, but we can try our very best, you know? Feedback does help. And I appreciate when you guys are constructive with your criticism um, because a lot of times, well, no, not a lot of times, all times that, you know, you leave something in the comment section, we try to do our best to listen to it and to take it seriously and implement it because you guys are, you're the lifeblood of the episodes. Like you're who we're talking to. So, um, Peachy, we're almost done here. There's okay? no more French fries, so don't we're almost done here. for them. Also, guys, uh, let us know if there's any sort of different... Um, I don't know if we were, if we were to plan a live podcast, like what what you might want for that, you know, whether it's like what we have planned for it or how we do it, just you know, let us know because we want to organize that at some point. That'd be fun. Maybe not like next week because it's going to involve some tweaking to our setup. But um, regardless, thank you guys for 200 episodes. You are wonderful. Dink dink, and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good week. Bye.